Shepherd with Pamela Shep Productions here. And today I'm going to be making a puff quilt. I'm making one for a little dolly crib for my granddaughter. My daughter got a little dolly crib. And then I'm gonna make one for my granddaughter that matches it. I make the dolly one, is it smaller squares, smaller puffs, and then for the granddaughter, a little bit bigger. And so um, my daughter got a packing, um, kind of when she got a pack, I don't even know what she got from Amazon or somewhere, but there was this really different packing type of deal. So I'm going to show you that and I'm gonna make a little sheet that zips on for that too. So, okay, let's get started. Okay, so let me see if I can widen out. No, I can't, that's as wide as I can get. But this piece of, um, this piece of whatever it is, uh, it's very soft and fluffy, and they packaged something with her. The little doll crib, uh, I think I can tear this part off that's so loud. Yeah, I can tear that off. And the doll crib is 12 inches by 24 inches. So I'm going to cut this. Um, I think it's certainly more than 12, but we're going to, um, let's see. Yeah, that's 14 inches. So I'll cut two inches off of this. And then this, is, uh, I'll make a, I'll, I'll tell you how I'm going to cut the fabric in just a minute. I'll cut this uh, 12 by 24, and then I'm going to use this as a, as a measurement right here. Okay, one and three fourths inches. So what I'm going to do is add a fourth of an inch and a fourth of an inch on each side for the quarter inch seams. So that'll work. And then on the end, I'm going to put a, a zipper so that you can unzip it in case she spills something all over it. Okay, so I finished the mattress cover and I put a zipper in the end of it so they could take it off if they needed to clean it. These are some pieces of um, flannel that I have and this is the color minky that I have for the back of it. I want to do the puff quilt. For my granddaughter I wanted to do the five inch squares on top and four inch squares on the bottom and for the baby quilt uh, I think I'm going to use a little tiny bit of some eyelet lace for the baby doll. Don't know if I will for the, the granddaughter, but anyhow, um, so that's, that's this is what I have ready to go. I'm going to cut some squares for the little dolly quilt, so I'll need, I'll write down what I need and I'll show that on the screen, okay? Okay, I had some little scrap pieces, so I put my little block on them and I have my little turning wheel that I actually mostly use for my English paper piecing but it worked great you know to, to turn it and cut these little pieces out so uh, what I was making before is I was making little diapers for the dolls and I've got uh, I'm going to put some velcro on them so the grandbabies can change their the little dolly's diapers and so uh, on this one I cut I cut these pieces three and a half this which is what I decided to do was three and a half and two and a half so I'm going to do three and a half on all these decorative ones and so this is one of these uh, from Riley Blake um, I don't know if you can you can see it better that way. Uh, the three and a half trim and ruler by Riley Blake, and it ends up being a three inch because you use it leaves you a quarter of an inch all the way around. So that's what I'm doing. And I thought, well, I cut them uh, with a long ruler, three and a half inches, and so I thought, well, this way I'll just do it like that. My uh, rotary cutter that I loved so much broke and so I ended up I had this one I don't even know where I got it but it's one of those Kai my scissors that I love the most are Kai scissors K-A-I Kai 
and I have several sizes. And this is Kai. I almost think it might have come when I got the scissors and I just put it in a drawer. And then on the back here, it uh, soft and hard, you know, it gives you where you can push on it. And I actually really like this. What you do, you don't open it or anything, you just push down and it, um, and the, the piece comes down and the blade is exposed. One of my favorite ones was just this cheapy one here. Just a little cheapy one, but it won't come back out now. And I took it apart, and I even accidentally leaned it up against the glue gun, and hey, anyhow. I like the kind that you can do with your um, clamp it like that to, to do it. So I need, uh, what I ended up needing, since these are going to end up being uh, two inch, two and a half inch blocks, because you do the smaller, you do the one underneath this size. Uh, and I'll tell you more. Let's just get these cut, and it'll make more sense in just a minute. I think this has just a tiny bit more. There we go. All right. Okay. So I'm going to cut that row and this row, because I think I need something like 72 blocks. That's where I was coming up with six blocks wide and twelve bar, uh, twif, <laughs> six blocks across and twelve blocks down. So I need seventy-two blocks. So I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to cut a bunch of these just at random. All these different uh, ones I showed you the fabric. I think it's just going to be so gentle and so sweet. Okay, because these are so small, it really is easier to put these together uh, before I put them under the needle of the machine. And you want to take a really a scant quarter inch seam. And the reason being is because later when we sew over top of it, we'll hide the seam. A nice scant quarter inch. I'm chain piecing. I just keep going. I put it, I put it like this. I flip it over kind of in the middle. Doesn't really matter. And then I put it under this foot and I've been running it right along there and that makes a nice little scant quarter inch seam for me. And I do the next one. This is pretty satisfying. I watched uh, yesterday, I did the first side and um, after I cut them, and it, uh, I watched a uh, video, and I really enjoyed doing it. And see, you don't have to get it right in the middle, so it's pretty forgiving in that regard. And if you'll notice, I have this, when I put this um, down to the corner, straight, I have this flip go down so that when my needle goes across, it's going in the right direction. See? And I just keep doing one after the next, after the next. And I have 72 of these. And as soon as I get these, I'm going to sew all three sides um, so that we can leave one side open to fill it full of polyfill. So I'm going to, this is the second side. As soon as I finish with these, I'll break them apart and then I'll do the third side and I'll be back. I did the first row and the second row, and I'm gonna show you how 
I do those. Um, first, the next, the first thing I'm going to do is is sew the third row together. So I picked them up. This is the first one. Um, the second one, the third one, fourth one, fifth one, and the sixth one. So you got to keep them in order so that your pattern will work, unless you don't care. So that's the bottom. And then you want to make sure that your little pocket stays open at the bottom. So there's the bottom one, the next one, the next, the next. So I'm going to sew these two together making sure the bottoms are open and I'm going to put them together and now I'm going to sew them together with a quarter of an inch seam because I want to hide this scant quarter inch seam on the front side so you don't see it at all. I'll put it down here. Let me make sure I have that out of the way. Okay. All right, then I'm going to take the next one and make sure the pocket is open at the bottom. And I'm going to put those two together side by side and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> my little stiletto it is a bit thick but it's fine whoa okay and then we're gonna pick up the next one making sure the little pocket is down at the bottom front to front sewing a quarter of an inch seam Now what we want to do is take this, uh, <clears throat> we're going to actually sew this onto this portion with the poofies, <clears throat> but before I do, it's just easier for me to run a little stitch down there. Okay, now the only thing is to on this that you really need to watch is you want to keep your let me back out just a little bit. Let's see if I can back out a little bit. You want to make sure that you've got your seams staying at the same point. And we're gonna sew this on to this before we put any poofs in there so it'll be easier to deal with. So we're going to 
try to keep all the seams in the same area. Alrighty. I also went ahead and made a sweet little pillow. I just sewed some of the pieces together onto a piece of batting. Sewed a piece of the backing on it. Put the little lace on it and there you have the little pillow. 
As you can see, I tied the back of the quilt every other block, and I just love the way this turned out. It is so adorable. Thank you for sharing this time with me. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments, and I will uh, put the sizes and everything down in the description for you as well. Thank you for sharing this with me. God bless you all, and may you have a blessed and wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next video, okay? And don't forget to subscribe, and if you like this, Give me a thumbs up, okay? Thank you, bye-bye.